among ancient ruins, evil grows once more. The seed of corruption advances, spreading dread and despair. We must give chase. Welcome to Path of Exile 2's second act. As you saw in the trailer, Act 2 is centered around a caravan of Marraketh called the Ardura who live in the Vasteri Desert. You're chasing another caravan from an opposing tribe called the Faradun. There's a set of large ancient gates blocking the progress of the caravan through a desert pass, so you're being sent through the traitor's passage to unlock them. We shall wait here, Jingak. But the military carts have departed for the gates. Make haste! Path of Exile 2 is a lot more than just new acts. We want combat to feel both brutal and responsive, even at low levels. We're ensuring that each weapon type has unique and different mechanics. Each weapon class feels different to play, and today we're going to start by demonstrating the new spear weapon class. Spears are a weapon class favoring mobility with both melee and ranged attack options. To that end, each spear will grant you at least one mobility skill. In this case, the spear comes with both an engage and disengage skill. When you engage, it increases your melee damage for a short time, and that really encourages you to be mobile during combat. One of the skills we're using here is called Whirling Slash. When you use Whirling Slash, it creates a sandstorm that grows in size each time you use the skill. When you leave the sandstorm, it explodes, dealing damage to nearby monsters. A great way to do that is to use the Disengage skill, which makes you fly backwards and throw projectiles. PoE 2, each area's mini-boss is a much more substantial fight with interesting mechanics. You'll be able to find at least one mini-boss in each area of the game. One thing I love about this boss in particular is that it destroys the ceiling when it slams the ground, letting in more light. Clever players will notice that if they're standing in the light, then they're not going to have any rocks falling on their head. The rapid assault skill that we're using against this boss does three rapid stabs, followed by a fourth stab that deals more damage and can stun, if you're willing to commit to a long attack time. While developing the skills for Path of Exile 2, we were really thinking a lot about designing skills that could be cancelled early to dodge, or you can commit to the full attack for maximum damage. skills we're using here is called Spear Field, which creates an area of spears coming out of the ground that impale monsters who walk into them, causing them to bleed. As the monsters move towards you, they take damage, so using your mobility skills as a way to move away from them is a great strategy here. In Path of Exile 2, we've invested a lot in our animation system. I'm sure you're noticing the animations are looking a lot better than they did in PoE 1, but there's also a lot of subtle detail, like characters having different run animations depending on how fast they're moving. When we use a Quicksilver Flask here, you can see the character changes to a sprinting animation.
Now that we've arrived at the ancient gates, we're going to show you another of the new weapon classes in Path of Exile 2, crossbows. Crossbows are special in that they grant attack skills implicitly. This particular crossbow grants Power Shot, which is a high damage single target attack. In order to modify what Power Shot does, you're going to need to equip Bolt skill gems, which change the type of bolts that are loaded into the crossbow. Here we've got three different bolt skills that the character can switch between depending on the situation. Armor piercing bolts. Incendiary bolts. Permafrost bolts can be used to disrupt packs of enemies to prevent them from closing in on your position. You can then follow up with armor piercing bolts to do plenty of damage. In this area, we're helping Asala, leader of the Ardura, to open the ancient gates and let the caravan through. Because the bolt types are the skill gems, support gems that are added to them will modify whatever the skill is that you're using. Here we're going to add multiple projectiles to our incendiary bolt. In Path of Exile 2, we're doing a lot more interesting things with monster packs. Here you can see some of the monsters patrolling around. Now we're coming to another example of a Path of Exile 2 miniboss, Le'im the Impaler. The boss has dropped another type of crossbow, a Siege Crossbow. This crossbow grants the Siege Cascade skill. The skill is also modified depending on what type of bolts you're using. We try to add a lot more little details to combat in Path of Exile 2. You might notice that the monsters who die while burning have charred corpses. We really want to make sure that there's a feeling that as you leave the battlefield, there's clear evidence of what combat took place there.
surgery bolts. Armor piercing bolts. This is the perennial king, the leader of the Faradun. His goal here is to prevent you from catching the caravan at any cost. has gone on long enough. The king is not the man I once knew. And sand swallow me if I do any more to enable him. You plan to continue your pursuit, yes? You will not catch him. Not without me. We cannot follow through the raging sands. Let us return to the caravan and question this defector. This is the Ardura caravan, your town in Act 2. I am Asala, the Sekma of the Ardura. I care not where you came from, nor what caste you might have been there. All that matters is that you have shown yourself capable in battle, Jinga. Remain a friend to the Ardura, and you shall have nothing but respect from us. From what your shade has told us, the situation is dire. This Balbalic will live or die based on her usefulness in pursuit of the seed of corruption. Ask her what questions you will, then we, Adura, will decide her fate. You need not trust me. You will see the truth of my information soon enough. I ask nothing of you. Only that you do what you know is right. One of the things we really wanted to do in Act 2 was to use the mobility of the caravan to allow the player to choose how they explore the act. Here you're given four options on how to proceed. There is a tribe of lost men that inhabits the Mastodon Badlands. They worship the bones of those long ago beasts. And that faith has given rise to powerful tasks that can somehow call on storms and strike enemies with lightning. The king wishes to steal these objects of worship and use their lightning in war. Do what you must. Though events demand you tread upon a valley of the dead, do not do so flagrantly. Keep your presence light, cleanse what corruption you can, and we shall skirmish with the Faradun to protect your flank. Once you've picked your destination, the caravan will travel to that area and come to a stop so that you can disembark and go on your quest. Because we just got the Storm Sphere skill as a quest reward, now would be a great time to switch back to spears and use some ranged abilities. Storm Spear fires a lightning projectile which splits on contact. The other skill we're using here is called Blazing Lance. Blazing Lance creates a trail of fire from the ground, dealing damage over time. However, if you're willing to stand in place for long enough, you can throw a second spear that will fan the flames for much more damage.
We've just found a unique spear. It's called Devata's Wind. This spear has an extra modifier that synergizes really well with Storm Spear. When you disengage, you get two additional projectiles on your projectile skills. Thank <laughs> you.